Hello everyone, Muckluck Douglas Bartholomew Reginald Esquire the Fourth here, and this is a guide on how to get the Legendary Ring Coalescence in Guild Wars 2. Coalescence comes from a collection of raid achievements and a Mystic Forge recipe, so you will need access to Path of Fire to access the required raids, and nine other people to clear raids with. If you are interested in getting started on raiding for the first time ever, we've got a guide for that over here. Link will be in the description. As with all legendaries, Coalescence has the ability to select the stats that are on it and change them any time you are not in combat. Additionally, unlike most accessories, it has a graphic. The three legendaries, Aurora from Living World Season 3, Vision from Living World Season 4, and Coalescence from Raids form a kind of set graphically. If you have any one of those items equipped, you will have these above your head when in combat. Any two look like this, and all three together look like this. Additionally, with the announcement of the legendary armory in development, getting a legendary ring, amulet, accessory, or back item will be great because it will affect all of your characters regardless of what armor or weapon weapon types they use. Like most legendaries, we make Coalescence by hurling a few choice items into the Mystic Forge. However, the main thing is the achievement reward ingredients you get from raids. A quick rip off the band-aid moment here, we're going to need a lot of raid boss kills. If you started every legendary from scratch with zero progress, this one would take the most effort in my opinion. Note that I said effort, not time. One of the ingredients is 150 raid boss kill proof. I'll go into detail on that later. You will also need 250 funerary incense and 300 plus elegy mosaics from Path of Fire open world. It's good to get started on these ingredients early. First up, we need Coalescence 1 Unbridled. This is a collection achievement that will appear after you have looted the chest from your first raid boss kill. Now we need to gather the following items. The first three items are all looted from semi-hidden treasure chests in Raid Wing 5 after you have cleared it. I've already tried joining some Someone else's raid after they cleared it, and it doesn't work unless you have killed the bosses yourself at least once previously. If you've never killed the bosses a single time, you won't be able to leave the chest. Transcendental Binding, in a chest on a hill north of Desmina's platform. Note, you can mount in here. Transcendental Ink, in a hidden chest on a low cliff north of the frozen lake in the Hall of Chains. The lake is south of the platform that the escort ends on. Transcendental Parchment, found in a hidden chest behind Doom's throne after the final encounter. Meditation Logbook, the previous three items plus 100 pulsing brand sparks in the Mystic Forge give you the logbook. The next six items simply involve taking the Meditation Log to six locations and using the slash sit command there and waiting one minute for the update. Meditation Log Crystal Oasis is here. Meditation Log Desert Highlands is here. Meditation Log Elon Riverlands is here, on this rock near this small waterfall. Meditation Log The Desolation. After you travel here, you jump through the jackal portal you just saw me take. And this is the spot. Meditation Log Domain of Vabi is here, on the roof of this building. Mission Log Completed Log. After doing the previous steps, talk to Hasara in the Desert Highlands. He is located here, south from Derelict Delve Waypoint. Finishing this collection rewards you with Hateful Swirl, which is one of the ingredients for later. It is an Ascended Ring, and you can use it now if you want to. That won't prevent you from being able to make the Legendary. Next up is Coalescence 2, The Gift. Let's get to it. The first item is an Alembic Apparatus. You must kill at least one boss in Raid Wing 6 to purchase this item. Naturally, the first boss is the easiest of the three. I recommend that one. After beating a boss, talk to Glenna and you can buy it with Gating Crystals. That's the Path of Fire Raid currency and 10 gold. I'm going to skip ahead a few items here for a moment. If you are with a group and you are clearing this Raid Wing in one night, maybe they're experienced and they're helping you get through 
through it or something like that. After you kill the first boss and you buy the Alembic, and you can get the Alembic after your raid group is done with the whole wing, you can come back for it, that's totally fine. Continue on with your group to clear the Twin Largos and Kadim. After Kadim is dead, you will be able to loot a small chest nearby, which has the Bottle of Surprise empty in the box. The chest will only have the bottle if you've already got this collection unlocked. If you loot the chest before unlocking this collection, you will have to wait until another raid reset. Okay, the rest of this step is super easy. It is just running around. Do this in doses if you get sick of it, but you can knock all this out in one session if you want and on your own. Bottle of Rage Empty is picked up on the Eastern Balthazar statue at the Temple of Balthazar in the Straits of Devastation. Bottle of Rage Filled. The bottle will fill when approaching King Joko's Sky Garden, where you have the final showdown with Balthazar at the end of the Path of Fire story. Bottle of Contempt Empty is found in a small crevice below the Cauldron of Searing in the Iron Marches. Bottle of Contempt Filled talk to any separatist sympathizer in the stronghold of Ebonhawk. These guys have so much contempt it takes a physical form. That's amazing. I've already mentioned where to get the Bottle of Surprise empty from Kadim's room. Bottle of Surprise Filled, just take the empty bottle and jump into the Mystic Forge in Lion's Arch. Bottle of Fear Empty slightly south of the Temple of Ages Hero Challenge in Queensdale by interacting with the bottles on the floor in front of the Duena statue. Bottle of Fear Filled is from talking to the Sanctum Librarian in the Dark Library, which can be accessed through the rift at the end of the Tomb of Primeval Kings in Desert Highlands. Bottle of Anguish Empty is found in a bookshelf in Scarlet's secret lair in the caverns below the Dermond Priory. To get here, start from the Dermond Priory waypoint, exit the building and go west. Jump over the railing at the edge. There is a group of bats near a cave to your right. Enter the cave, go past the worms. The entrance to Scarlet's secret lair is to your right by a veteran cave troll. The door is behind a fake wall. Enter the place, enjoy the sights. There's the bottle. Bottle of Anguish Filled. Perform the Slash Kneel emote at the Field of the Fallen in Lion's Arch. Bottle of Excitement Empty is found at Splorg Metamystics Lab in Metrica Province. On a table on the right just after entering from the south entrance. Bottle of Excitement Filled is from entering the endlessly looped portal in the Mistlock Observatory, aka the Fractal Room. Bottle of Joy Empty is found next to the Quaggan Coddler on the ground level of Coddler's Cove Jumping Puzzle in Timberline Falls. Don't worry, you don't have to actually do the puzzle. To get there, go to Okarinu Waypoint. There are two waterfalls. Go to the smaller, higher one to the south. A bit south and east of it, you'll find footing to start up a path of ledges along the wall. When you get to a second, smaller cave, almost exactly south of the Armorsmith icon on the map, but on the opposite side of the cave, enter that to find the puzzle. Look for Coddler. The bottles are next to him on the ground. Bottle of Joy Filled is found by entering the fountain with the playing quaggan hatchlings near the Mystic Plaza in Lion's Arch. Bottle of Shame Empty found under the table in the Seraph headquarters in front of Logan, of course. The entrance is here in Divinity's Reach. Bottle of Shame Filled is found approaching Glint's Lair in the Desert Highlands. Alchemical Alembic complete. Once all bottles have been found and filled, use the Alembic apparatus that you bought from Glenna to complete this step. Completing this gives you the gift of complex emotions. Save it for later. I know I have complex emotions after doing all of this. You've now unlocked Coalescence 3 Culmination. This is part 3 out of 10 achievements. I'm joking, there's only 3. Who got scared? Raise of hands? If the first achievement was Raid 5 and the second achievement is Raid 6, then this achievement is Raid Wing 7. Step 1. Go clear Raid Wing 7. The Twisted Essence of Generosity drops from Cardinal Adina. The Twisted Essence of Resolve drops from Cardinal Sabir. The Twisted Essence of Trust drops from Kadim the Peerless. Go talk with Hasara, who is in Abaddon's Cave in the Desolation. The portal is here to reach it, same as before. This will get you the Worn Meditation Logbook. 
Go to the Sunspear Sanctuary in the Domain of Vabi and interact with the strange energy here. You need the logbook and all three energies with you. This will purify them and give you purified essence of generosity, resolve, and trust, and the infused meditation logbook. Completing this collection gives you the gift of patience. Now we need a gift of desert mastery. The first item, Gift of the Desert, is made with gifts of the Oasis, Highlands, Riverlands, and Desolation. You will need full map completion of these zones in order to make these purchases. They are each bought with heart vendors, meaning do the heart, then purchase the item. The Vendors are Priestess Karima at the Amnoon Farms in the Crystal Oasis, Tendaji at Diviner's Reach in the Desert Highlands, Follower Zun at Skyward Reach in the Elon Riverlands, and finally Keisha Odili at the Bone Strand in the Desolation. Slap those four gifts together in the Mystic Forge to make the Gift of the Desert item. Gift of the Rider is made with four things. In total, to purchase these things, you're going to need 300 Elegy Mosaics. That is four purchases of 75 Mosaics each. You can farm for these quickly by joining a Path of Fire Legendary Bounty Train in the Group Finder, where a horde of people go around Path of Fire mobbing down big monsters. Quite enjoyable and a great way to have fun with a ton of other people not too seriously. You will need to purchase Spirit of the Raptor from Axi in the sinking ruins in the Crystal Oasis can only be purchased when you have all Raptor Masteries. Spirit of the Springer from Stable Master Unja in Stampede Uplands in the Desert Highlands requires all Springer Masteries to purchase. Spirit of the Skimmer from Skimmer Trainer Adra in Skimmer Ranch in the Elon Riverlands requires the Skimmer Mastery Nimble Benevolence to purchase. Note that you do not have to have the Underwater Skimmer Training Mastery because that mastery came later. Spirit of the Jackal from Drajkor Spirit Squall at Sand Jackal Run in the Desolation requires all Jackal Masteries to purchase. Slap those four items in the Mystic Forge to get Gift of the Rider. Okay, are we done yet? Uh, let's see, Bloodstone Shard, that's from Miani and Lion's Arch, no big deal. And what's the last item? Funerary Incense, oh God, I hate these things. Okay, we need 250 Funerary Incenses. You can buy one incense per day from renowned heart vendors after doing those hearts in Path of Fire. This is extremely time consuming and I did not do it this way. However, the Primeval Steward in the Tome of Primeval Kings is a bit different. You can trade crystalline ingots up to five per day to him, or do the trades involving trade contracts or elegy mosaics countless times per day. All trades or creations of ingots involve amalgamated gemstones, obsidian, and ectoplasms. Small tip here, if you're doing trades per day, such as crystal and ingots, it can be handy to park a character next to the steward. You can log in, do the trades, and then log out each day until you have enough. Skipping ahead 10 years, for once you have all that, take the Bloodstone Shard you purchased from Miani and Lion's Arch, the Gifts of the Desert and the Gift of the Rider, and Funerary Incense, and combine them all to make Gift of Desert Mastery. <laughs> The six balls of dark energy come from salvaging ascended items. You're going to be doing a lot of raiding in order to get coalescence, so I promise you by the time you're done with all this other stuff, you will be able to salvage a few spare ascended pieces if you can't do it now. Take the balls of dark energy, the gift of desert mastery, the gift of complex emotions from one of the earlier achievements, and 150 legendary divinations. Each one is looted from a path of fire boss kill, and combine them to make the gift of compassion. A note here, if you have an old account predating Path of Fire, you may be able to convert Legendary Insights, which is the boss kill proof from Raid Wings 1 through 4, into Legendary Divinations. Maximum of 168 times per account, but that is far more than what we need. You can check the Merchant in the Aerodrome in Lion's Arch if you are eligible. If you are, then you can be farming the earlier, arguably easier Raid Wings for your boss kills for this step. 
Finally, a Mystic Tribute. I have gone over this in countless previous videos. Basically, you take all of these items that you can gather yourself or buy off the trading posts. Yes, even Mystic Clovers, because there is a forge recipe to turn Mystic Coins into Mystic Clovers, and you can buy coins, and combine it to make the Mystic Tribute. This step is basically time and or gold. It can be obtained patiently or rushed by throwing gold at the problem. If you need help with Clovers or coins, Coins, I have a video on that here. The link is in the description. Finally, take the Mystic Tribute, the Gift of Compassion, Gift of Patience, and the Hateful Swirl, and if you have been wearing it, be sure to extract any infusions that are on it before you do this, and throw those four items into the Mystic Forge for Coalescence. Gods, was that the longest legendary guide yet? It felt like it. As always, here is the legendary outro. I can already predict seeing a lot of that's too much work for one item, I have a life in the comments section, so I'll just say that once again, I stress working on this in doses. I found it a lot of fun, each day or raid reset knocking out a step or two and slowly progressing towards my goal and eventually getting it done. But yeah, it has a lot of steps. And that's pretty much all that there is to Coalescence. Remember that I have links to all of the steps I glossed over in the description below. Use them if you need more details. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like for the YouTube algorithm, comment if you have any questions or if you know any tricks and tips that I didn't share, and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more content. A special thank you for our fantastic Patreon supporters who make this content possible, and if you are interested in becoming one and getting more videos and and perks, there is a link in the description. My in-game name is muckluck.9082 if you need to reach me there or talk to me live any evening on Twitch. You can follow me there or see my schedule on my calendar down below in the description. Shilling complete, thank you for listening, and happy writing.